Hey Artleads, you might have clicked on this video for its scary title, but rest assured it's not clickbait. I'm just trying to make a point here. In this video, I want to explain to you why the term concept art has been butchered and misunderstood and what alternative ways there are to look at what I and many of my colleagues do in the industry. So I'll hope you join me for this video. All right, hey art leads, welcome to the Artwatch channel, the program where we train our creative muscles on a daily basis. For today's video, I want to discuss the misconception around concept art. And no, this is not another video where someone talks about the difference between concept art and illustration. Because in today's industry, there really isn't any difference between these two. However, if there is no difference, then what is concept art? And that is where many of you are still confused and maybe a little bit overwhelmed. And I think I would like to start off with pointing out that from my point of view, concept art is too broad of a term to use in today's industry. We might as well just call it visual art at this point and it will mean the same thing because anything is basically concept art of some sort. Even if we look at figurative art or figurative fine art, it could be labeled as concept art as it would be the concept of someone's portrait seen through the artist's eyes. The point is, it's not specific enough. So to better formulate the practice of concept art, we should look at what it actually encompasses in today's industry. What professional art jobs are labeled concept art these days and what do these people, myself included, actually do if we do anything at all, right? Um, so, and this is where it gets interesting and confusing at the same time. So I'm sorry, guys, but you see, for me, concept art equals visual problem solving. Much like industrial design, we sit down with the client and list the problems that need to be solved visually. And the most important aspect here is context. And in this case, context means three questions. What is the project? What stage is the project in? And what is the project's purpose? When we look at the first question, what is the project? We already have a handful of possible answers for concept art. We could have games, movies, advertisement, theme parks, editorial design, etc. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'll stick to the most prominent and the ones you are most interested in, which is games and film. Now, when we look at the second question, what stage is the project in? Another handful of answers are possible. We have the blue sky stage, the stage where anything is possible, hence the term blue sky. This is where the client has almost no idea of what the project looks like or what it is, visually at least. And this means that at this stage, only a handful of artists are hired to solve these visual problems. Now, usually these artists are very experienced and very senior. The reason for this is that during this stage, you need artists that can almost do anything and they can do it efficiently and effectively. Now, these artists can include storyboard artists, color script artists, you know, for film, or visual developers in general and general concept artists for games. Now, when I say general concept artist, I don't mean artists that do general concept art, you know. Um, it's more about highly effective concept artists that might have some sort of an expertise, but they can design out basically anything that the brief requires them to or the project requires them to, and they can do it to a high degree and high fidelity. Now, the second stage is what you can deem visual development. So this stage is where the style and the tone or design of the project is taking shape because of the experimentation done during the blue sky stage. Now, the thing here to remember is that these stages might sometimes just be labeled as the same stage. I like to separate them because you usually have a very blue sky stage where anything is possible and then certain boundaries are made during this blue sky stage and then we move into visual development very organically to start creating more assets based on what we've experimented 
Now this stage might include more artists, but it doesn't really have to. And it's usually handled by the same type of artists, although more specialty professions might come into play, such as costume designers, creature designers, character designers, prop artists, UI artists, you name it, right? Now the last stage here is pre-production. And pre-production, um, which is often also mislabeled as Blue Sky, which it's not, Pre-production is the stage that can only start when the final visual style or tone of the project has been established. So this stage marks the final stage before things are put into production, hence the term pre-production. Thus it requires a lot more artists and a lot more specific output because all of this output needs to go into the production departments, i.e. animation, modeling, um, sculpting, audio, whatever it is, right? Um, so all of these things need to support those de departments. Now, usually these stages are shared across game and film, albeit under a different name, but it's definitely not the rule. Now, when we look at the third question, what is the project's purpose? We have many more options for games than we do for movies. Movies are there to tell a story and move the audience regardless of style. Games, on the other hand, can have a myriad of mechanics that will steer the concept art direction. So if a concept artist is brought onto a games project, his or her role will be different from that of a concept role in a movie project. Not always, but a lot of the times it is. But more specifically, a concept art role in a realistic cinematic adventure game will look vastly different from the concept art role in a highlight stylized battle arena game, for instance, right? So yet yeah, both are solving visual problems. That's the important part. So as you can see, while the term concept art may sound cool, it doesn't really inform us that much about what we do. And if I compare that to industrial design or the term industrial design or product design, where the definition is a lot easier to grasp, you know, these are professional artists that design products for industrial purposes. Looking at how concept art is very dependent on the context of a project, I deem the term context design or context designer much more appropriate than concept art. But I guess our idle ego doesn't really want to part with the word art. Anyway, if you want to learn more about how you can increase your chances of getting hired, make sure you watch our business videos available on artwatt.com, where I talk a lot more in depth about things as portfolio building, marketing, and the business side of being a concept artist. So I thank you all for watching and I hope to see you later. Bye-bye.